Oh, now what? How to get to this? And the preparation? And how to handle situations? In this video, first time in cart, learning not to kick out, trotting in the cart, driving outside, and how to handle spooking. How the day began. Somebody slept well tonight. To build a relationship with a horse, you have to tune in to horse time and be in the present moment without a clock or a calendar. The colt is growing up and there is work to do. This is his very first time properly attached to the cart. Relaxed with low neck, loose ears, chewing the bit calmly and steady even steps. Stress-free horses are fast learners. My assistant holds on to a line, but only holding it loose, walking beside the colt. I must say, it's such a cool feeling, finally sitting in the cart behind your own colt. I feel comfortable driving the colt, and he looks like he's comfortable as well. Walking next to the horse is simply an investment in the horse's learning ability. When you walk next to him, he just feels safer. And we benefit from the horse's strong herd instinct. Together with us, he feels safe. I'm very happy with how he performed today. And look at him, he seems to be proud as well. I like to have a person to help the colt to stay in a halt when I release the cart. It's so much easier for him if there is somebody there. Every single time he manages to stay standing still, he just gets better at it. Whenever or whatever we do with the horse, we're always practicing. If we argue, he becomes better at conflict. And if we cooperate, he gets better at cooperating. So when you spend time with your horse, you're training it. No matter what you do, you're training good or bad. And that really is tough shit. You gotta know what you're doing. Think about what you're doing with him. And uh, not arguing doesn't mean not setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is super important. Here we are, next morning, another beautiful day. But freeze and cold! We have layers of warm clothes and the horse has warm and thick fur, just like a polar bear. I have so many layers of heavy clothes, walking like a penguin. <laughs> Plan A for today is to try to trot while he's pulling the cart, fully attached. A future the colt knows nothing about. Back to the present, planning for the future. What we do not want driving horses to do is this, kicking out behind. Because of that, let's practice noise and sudden movements from behind. He must be 100% safe, especially when something touches his hindquarters. I cannot stress this enough, the importance of spending time practicing this. He does this absolutely perfect. If anything unexpected happens when we harness him into the cart, the very last thing we want is him to be scared of anything making noise from behind. Sudden noises from behind often trigger the horse's strong flight instinct. We don't want the horse to try to escape from the carriage. A horse in panic is very dangerous. Let's keep up the good work in different ways. Like backing into the noise. He obviously doesn't not care at all. For those of you who doesn't speak Norwegian, bra means good. I'm not talking about underwear. Laying is fine, but without kicking out behind. Okay. Let's go on, to the cart. In the beginning, I do lead him into the cart's shafts. Later, I will long rein him in. Like a sneak peek into the future. Practice, practice, practice. Here it's March and not much snow left. This is how I want it, and what we're working towards. I put the reins over his back. Like that, they are easy to grab from both sides of the horse. 
This is the second time he is properly attached to the cart. The goal for him is to be harnessed without any help and to stand in front of him, that he stands as nicely as his father Birkelitullen does here. Similar to people, horses like to be good at things. They feel accomplished when they succeed, regardless of how much we facilitate for them. That means that you don't have to be afraid to facilitate and support the horse, because by supporting the horse, you support the process. The colt enjoys the company while I am touching the car. Even though the goal is for him to become independent and not need the support, my assistant walks next to the colt to make him feel safer. He's not alone in front. Here it's winter in Norway and we do have snow, also on top of our roof. Sudden sound of snow avalanches from the roof on the indoor. Even though he was a little scared, he did not kick out. Let's take a look again. She doesn't tighten the rope, the assistant. By staying calm, she's signaling to the horse, this is not dangerous. We just stay calm. And look, he is quickly calm too. What a horse! Even when he plays, he bucks, but he very rarely kicks out. Anyway, now we did Trot already. So let's go on with the introducing Trot. I let the horses trot slow on purpose. As long as he trots, I am happy for now. The horse will be more forward thinking when he is more familiar with the new tasks, like trotting. My experience is that if I push the horse at a faster pace than he is ready for, in a vulnerable phase, uh, the only thing I achieve is tension and problems. During the training I have a clear idea about uh, the next steps, but I do not have a plan for how long or a short time we will need to achieve it. The horse has uh, neither clock nor calendar nor does it have any idea of what the goal is. It is important to remember to see the situation from the horse's perspective, so we understand what we need to deal with in the training situation. In the beginning, we only ask for trot on the straight lines. I want him to be very familiar with trotting on straight lines before I ask him to trot while turning. Gradually, I will ask him to start trotting out of the corner, so the task becomes easier and easier in trot as the line straightens out. The demands gradually increase, and eventually he trots through the entire short side. This usually takes 5 to 10 sessions. We don't want a carriage horse that lunges forward in the harness nor when he starts to walk, or when we ask him to trot, or if he sees that the road he's going on is going uphill. We want a horse that starts the carriage smoothly and gradually. In accordance with tradition and good driving etiquette, it should be comfortable for the passengers to sit in. The assistant should walk on the inside of the horse, Doing like this, she can gradually help to slow down the horse in a safe manner if an accident were to occur. Safety first, always. The horse starts thinking more forward after only a few lines in trot. When the training works well and without conflict, we make sure to end it on a good note before the horse gets too tired. We want the horse to feel good about himself after the training session. Here you can see the horse standing and trying to chew on something while we are hitching the carry. Of course, it's not desirable that he does this, but I know he's a bit tired in the head after today's new tasks. When the horse is mentally tired, it is not able to digest much more, and as long as he stands still with his feet, I'm satisfied for now. So I can either choose to be satisfied that he performs the most important things brilliantly, or I can choose to make a problem out of a trifle. I know that when he is more accustomed to trotting in the carriage, it will cost him less and we can correct the chewing in a calm and constructive manner, with good results. Rome was not built in one day and a driving horse is not made in a single session. 
It is also not so efficient to try to download two or more apps simultaneously on your mobile phone. The pace of the process is therefore largely controlled by the horse itself. How fast can it tolerate moving forward? Now, next step! Actually, so ready to start working outside now. The world is out here! We've had a few days really nice weather and the snow is gone for a little while. He is familiar with the surroundings, but someone put something new around the corner. From the colt's point of view... BAM! What's that? He wants to take a look at it on a distance. But there is not room for more distance here. We don't want to go into this stuff with the cart. And watch how the assistant quickly goes in between the horse and the scary stuff. This is why you should always bring an assistant when starting a horse. The assistant shows him the way and we don't end up in a dangerous situation. So always be at least two people. You never know what's going to happen. Out of sight, out of mind. No stress, let's go to work. For safety reasons, I always recommend to wear a helmet and a gloves when driving a horse, especially when handling young stallions. And here we're gonna pass the thing again, and we'll let him stop and have a look at it. Here he stands really well in halt, enough time to get into the cart, and a little longer. He walks when asked, and not before asked. When he stretches down his neck into the contact, he shows he trusts the bit and the reins. Time spent with your horse is an investment in your horse. Like cryptocurrency, you save in Bitcoin and hope to get a fantastic return in the future sometime. Trotting on the long sides of the arena. Same as indoor, walking into the corners in the beginning. Here, I keep the whip on his left side. I want him to look or flex to the left in the corners and on the short side. For me, the whip is like a leg when I ride. The horse bends or yields from the leg or the whip. This will not work well if the horse is scared by the whip. Here, the colt walks to the left and he's looking or flexed to the right. He should be in flex to the left. Then I just touch his left hind quarter with the whip and he stops under with the left hind and flexes to the left. I don't use the whip hard, I just touch on the left side. Look at him, he's not scared at all by the whip. This is what I prepared when I taught him to step over with his inside leg. Why I have this line on? My assistant holds it and if anything were to arise, she can jump out of the carriage and help control the horse from the ground. Smooth transition to trot, exactly what I asked for. Everything we do here has a reason, and primarily it concerns safety or welfare. For safety, I always also carry a knife with me, so I can cut the harness and release the horse if an accident should occur. To avoid a situation here, the assistant walks in between the colt and the scary object. He is convinced it's okay to go here now. I make sure he can watch out the gate while taking off the carriage. Easier for the horse to stay standing still when having a good overview. It's a lot of small steps towards the future horse. And a perfect flying change! Love it! My silver grey treasure chest. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our video of a horse in the making. Why I'm doing all this? Well, just look at him. I mean, because pure horses are super cool. <laughs>